This LOS is calculate and interpret the expected return of an asset using the capital asset pricing model, CAPM. Okay, recall the CAPM formula is the expected return on the security equals the risk-free rate plus the beta of the security times the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate. So again, we have one, two, three, four uh, variables. Given three, calculate the fourth is the typical uh, situation that we need to do, okay? So a stock has a beta of 1.5, the expected return on the market is 10%, and the risk-free rate is 2%. What is the stock's expected return? So we just use the formula. It's going to equal 2% the risk-free rate plus the 1.5 beta times the market risk premium, which is 10% minus the 2%, and that's going to give us 9.2%. In equilibrium, the expected return and the required return in the market are equal. So that's um, important that sometimes the CAPM, we talk about it as being the required return. There are four variables. Given any three, you may be able to calculate for the fourth. Now we're going to work through an example of the estimate of expected return. So an analyst has the forecast for the following three stocks. He has stock A, stock B, stock C. And the beginning price today for stock A is $50. The expected price one year from now is $54 on stock A. An expected dividend uh, in one year from now is $2 and the beta of the stock is one. For stock B, the, stock, the beginning price today is $80. The expected price one year from now is 90 and the dividend one year from now $4 with a beta of 0 0.8. And for C, we have a beginning price today of $30. Expected price one year from now $34. Expected dividend one year from now, $1, and a beta of 1.2. So I just want to point out that this expected price one year from now, that would be using um, dividend discount model or a PE or a combination of the two, but we're making a forecast of the price at uh, one year from now. So also there's an assumption that the risk-free rate equals 7% and the expected return to the market is 15%, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to establish whether these stocks are undervalued, overvalued, or fairly valued using the CAPM, uh, which is going to give us a calculation for the expected, or sometimes we're going to call it the required return, okay? So step one, what we're going to do on the left-hand side is we're going to calculate the forecast return for each of the stocks. And that's easy. That's the expected price minus the beginning price plus the dividend divided by the beginning price. So ending price minus beginning price plus the dividend divided by the beginning price. And then we're going to compare that to the required return using the CAPM formula where the required return equals the risk-free rate, which is given to us, plus the beta times the market risk premium, which is the return to the market minus the risk-free rate, which we can see in this case is going to be 8%. Okay. So calculating the forecast return for each of the stocks, stock A, 12%, stock B, 17.5%, and stock C, 16.7%. Ending minus beginning plus the dividend divided by the beginning. And then we're going to compare that to the required return, risk-free rate plus the beta times the market risk premium. We can see for stock A, we have a required return of 15% which is greater than the forecast return. For stock B, we have a required return of 13.4%, which is less than the forecast return. And finally, for C, we have a required return of 16.7%, which equals the forecast return. So starting with C, C lies on the line because it's properly valued because the forecast return equals the required return. If we move to our left and look at A, Stock A is overvalued because the forecast return is less than the required return, so we would sell it or sell it short. So we can see here A lies below the line, the security market line, so it's overvalued. So just you have to remember that under the line is overvalued, okay? Which leaves us with stock B, and recall stock B, the forecast return is greater than the required return, so it's above the line, and that means it's undervalued, and so we would buy it. So we're just gonna finish this LOS with three quick practice questions. 
The first one is the risk-free interest rate is 5% and the return on, mar on the market portfolio is 8%. A stock with a beta of 0.5 that has an estimated rate of return of 7% is most likely A, overvalued, B, undervalued, or C, correctly valued. So the correct answer is B, the stock is undervalued. Let's work our way through the solution. So the first thing that we're gonna do is calculate the required return using the cap M, which is the risk-free rate plus the beta times the expected return to the market minus the risk-free rate, or we call that the market risk premium. So when we do that, that's a fairly simple calculation by now. We get 6.5% is the required return, and we can see that is less than the estimated or forecast return. Just be careful, sometimes we see expected return, estimated return, forecast return. When we're looking at that 7%, the estimated return, that's what uh, the return for one year. We, that's the number that we're comparing versus the required return using the cap M. And the estimated return is higher than the required return. That means the stock is undervalued, Remember, that's going to lie above the security market line. The 7% is greater than the 6.5%. The 6.5 is on the security market line. When it's correctly valued, the forecast or estimated return will equal the required return. Second practice question. The following table shows the data for stock of JQU and a market index. So the expected return of the stock is 15%. The expected return of the market index is 12%. The risk-free rate is 5%. The standard deviation of returns for the stock is 20%. The standard deviation of market returns is 15%. And the correlation of JKU and the market index returns is 0.75. Based on the cap M pricing model, JKU is most likely overvalued, undervalued, or fairly valued. Okay, I like this practice question because it's fairly typical of things that you see on an exam where you need to do a little subcalculation first, and uh, which adds a little bit of complexity. So first of all, we need to calculate the required return using cap M versus the expected return, or as I said, this is the forecast or estimated return of 15%. That's the return that we're gonna compare versus the cap M required return. But you can see, uh, the little trick here is that they're not giving you the beta. So remember for cap M, the expected return or required return equals the risk-free rate plus the beta times the return to the market minus the risk-free rate. So they've given us the expected return on the market and they've given us the risk-free rate. So that we have, this we have, this we have, but we don't have the beta. So they're giving us the standard deviation of the returns of the stock the standard deviation of the market returns, and the correlation. So this is uh, typical of a question that combines one or more LOS. You have to remember to calculate the beta, which here I've given you the formula is the correlation times the standard deviation of the stock divided by the standard deviation of the market. So if you remember that formula, it's not that difficult. You're going to calculate the beta is 0.75 times 0.2, the standard deviation of the stock, divided by 0.15, the standard deviation of the market, which in this case gives you a nice round number of one. Now that you have that, you can calculate the cap M, uh, which is the risk-free rate, 5%, plus one times the return to the market minus the risk-free rate. So we're gonna have a required return of 12%. So we can see the 15%, the expected return, is greater than our cap M return, so we're gonna be, again, if we uh, draw our line, here's our expected return, here's our beta, our security market line. Our forecast return is above the security market line. So we recall that that stock is undervalued. The forecast return is good, so that's a buy. So one last practice question, just to finish this LOS. Information about three stocks is provided below. Stock A has expected return of 12.8.5% and a beta of 1.5, which is Buram. Heisen has a expected return of 11.27% and a beta of 1.1. And Gutman stock has an expected return of 9.51% and a beta of 0 0.8. If the expected market return is 9.5% and the average risk-free rate is 1.2%, 
according to the capital asset pricing model, CAPM, and the security market line, which of the three stocks is most likely overvalued? A, Heisen, B, Buram, or C, Gutman? So the correct answer here is B, Buram is overvalued because it lies below the security market line. The expected or forecast return is 12.8.5%, which is less than the required return when we calculate the cap M. So recall for the cap M, the required return equals the risk-free rate plus the beta of 1.5 divided by the return of the market minus the risk-free rate. So for Boomram, the required return is 13.65%, but the forecast return is less than that, so it's overvalued. If we look at the other two stocks, Heisen, we calculate the cap M, we're going to get 10.33%, which is less than the forecast return of 1127 So that 1127 is going to lie above the security market line, so it is undervalued. Similarly, for Gutman, the cap M required return is 7.84%, and that is below the 951 forecast return. So again, the forecast return for Gutman, 9.51%. That's lying above the security market line, so it is undervalued. And that is the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.